My mind's so fast, yeah. And I've got all these things that I want to do. And I've got all these pockets in my brain. And I've got all these ideas for my companies and my tunes and my artists that I'm working with. And I felt like skunk. Felt like it put a weight on all of those thoughts. I've been around weed pretty much my whole life. My parents smoked it at home, so it wasn't a rebellion. It was more about the culture, tradition and spirituality. When the ground scene exploded, everybody smoked weed. It felt like it helped our creativity. Then skunk became a thing. It felt great at the time. It was like it had the answers to all of our questions. Maybe we didn't realise the effects it was having on us. Well, at least on me. It was becoming a problem more than a solution. I've always been close to my parents and my family home's always been like a hub for grime. They really witnessed what I was going through with Skunk. Did you notice a difference in me or any other man then when the Skunk weed came in? Your attitude changed. You became quite obnoxious after a while and so did a lot of your friends to each other because you were all under the same thing. I mean, when I first encountered Skunk, and I smelled it, I thought, what is this? You know, I didn't, I didn't like that, I, w I was worried with that. Then I, I obviously researched it and found out that it was growing in these um, houses where they had it under lights, fed by chemicals and hydration systems. Yeah. It's 10 times stronger yeah. than normal, you know, <laughs> organic herb, yeah? That's why people have a breakdown. There's a chemical in skunk weed called I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know, mental illness and, and that skunk weed, you can be in a dark place. People do need a helping hand to get back out of that, you know, just to leave them into just sit in their own dark place, it's not good. There has been a debate about weed and mental health, but what I'm realising is that skunk is the issue. But what's the difference between skunk and what my parents smoke? I'm meeting Guy Jones, a scientist that specialises in substance safety that can tell me a bit more about the effect skunk has on our brain. What's the difference between cannabis and skunk? Skunk strains have a very high amount of THC, the compound that gets you high. What is less emphasised in skunk is the cannabidiol content, or CBD. And so CBD has an antipsychotic effect. So when you have a strain which has a balanced THC to CBD ratio, what you find is that the CBD kind of moderates the effects of THC and makes it a little bit less of a kind of strung out high, a lot less likely to experience paranoia. So we see these kind of outdoor strains that have got maybe 4 or 5% of THC and maybe 1 2% of CBD have become bred and bred and bred until you've got maybe 10, 15, even 20% THC and still only maybe that 1, 2% of CBD. So you can see that although the THC levels have increased by maybe five times, the CBD hasn't caught up with that. And so that's where we think the, the sort of problems are starting to arise. I was wondering, is there any way to get a balance between the THC and the um, CBD? What you can do is buy pure CBD crystals um, and it's kind of like, it's less like a crystal and more like a wax, like cannabis wax, mm -hmm. and add that in to a joint, and it does then moderate the high a little bit, reduce the possible psychotic effects, and give a more balanced experience. But CBD on its own can't have any psychological effects on you. Yeah, it, it, for um, some people will feel like a, a very slight relaxing effect, but it's a very mild. But it won't cause any mental health issues. In no, because it, it actually reduces. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem to be. We don't seem to have found any link. I tried to cut down smoking. I even stopped for a year. Luckily, I didn't mash up my music career and done myself. Looking back at it now, got me thinking about other artists that may have had a problem with skunk. Subs is an MC that I've known for a while. He's been open about the serious mental health problems he's had because of skunk, but I've never really got into an in-depth conversation with him about it. When did you start smoking? About 14. Literally fucked me up from young, sent me mad. 
what weed was cut out at that time? Uh, cheese, some hardcore weed, fam. When did you, like, realise that, wow, this shit's strong? When I went to the psychiatrist and I says, look, uh, I don't think it's normal that uh, I'm not sleeping. So that's just, like, one, one example of, like, how, how mad can go mad. You get me? Uh, paranoid fucking all that shit. Because I'd, I'd walk down the road and feel like I have to walk, like, close to a bottle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because in case car pulled up. You know, I'd be in my boxes with my samurai sword on top of the roof and thing, you know what I mean? Looking like, yo, <laughs> you get me? <laughs> I've nearly died like five times, some raw shit, like one eye and all that fuckers, you get me? Here you go, lads. Yeah. Little one eye for you, you know what I mean? Stay in school, you bastards! Have you ever heard of a term, psychosis? Yeah, the uh, doctor sat there when I was about 16, 17 and says I had it. When you smoke skunk, does it like help your creative process? Well, uh, I think I did. I used to think I did, you get me? But then when I, actually, when I don't smoke weed, like, uh, you know what I mean? I sit there and actually think a better bar. Music, that keeps me um, sane, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was depending on the weed, but actually, like, it's my music I need more. The link between weed and mental health is always a controversial issue. Speaking to Subsy, it seems to me there's definitely a link between heavy skunk use and psychosis. Mm. Skunk is different from the more organic weeds that my parents smoked. But how's it actually been grown? And do the dealers know the harm it's potentially causing? Thanks for coming, bro. Basically, uh, in the last couple of years, I've, I've, I've been growing weed, yeah? To be quite honest, the way it is in the sky. Could you explain a bit about the difference in you know, then the way that the weed's grown naturally in a bit, how you how you're um, manufacturing it. I would mimic natural conditions, e.g. 12 hours of sunlight, you know, fake sunlight. 12 hours of darkness, you know, for the first couple of weeks, you know, we we'll sort of force those natural conditions. You will see the, the special kind of food, so you give it that extra boost and the extra growth, so you are actually sort of... Genetically modified. <laughs> you know what? I, in a way, in a way, yeah. I mean, I don't smoke weed myself. When you've got kids around, you, know, you have to try and set some kind of example. It is um, a high THC content. Yeah, and, and not so much CBD, because I've been finding out the THC mm -hmm. gets you yeah, yeah, yeah. gets you sometimes can give weed psychosis. I understand that there is a link to, you know, psychosis. Is, do I have a moral obligation or responsibility? I don't know. That may sound a little bit harsh. It may sound a little bit, you know, cold. I think it comes down to the susceptibility of the individual. I'm just being real with you, yeah. I don't have the biggest amount of conscience. I don't think I'm ruining lives. I don't. Maybe he's not ruining lives, but people in my scene have gone through some really hard times with skunk. It makes me wonder, what should the music industry do to support and educate young artists? Matt Thomas has seen the dark side of the music industry and is now committed to supporting people in music with mental health issues and substance abuse. My background is, uh, I was a record label guy. I worked at various big record labels like Universal and Warner Brothers, and I suffered terribly from addiction and mental health issues because simply it's a very enabling industry. There's a lot of booze around anyway, there's a lot of drugs around, whether you're backstage at a festival, or um, in the crowd, you know, or in, in the crowd, in a crowd yeah. or in a record label office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. It's not about telling everybody to stop smoking or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's just like communicating to see if people yeah. are having the same issues and like if they if they want help with it. You know, if they want someone to speak to about it. Because I feel that nobody is is tackling it. Community is the is the answer. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like community yeah. is most definitely the answer. Sometimes people need someone to say, yeah, ah, that happened to Absolutely. me too. Here yeah, I am, yeah, look yeah, at me. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. The music industry can sometimes be the source for drug-related problems. Music and creativity can also provide refuge for people tackling addiction. It's so important that young, talented people don't get into a rut with smoking skunk and lose their passion for making art. On a more grassroots level, Raw Material is a community charity based in South London who support young people with mental health problems and substance dependency through music. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Nice you alright? You. Nice to meet you, I'm Indy. Come on through. This is our live room where young people kind of collaborate, write songs together. So then we've got our top floor, which is DJing and production up here. Oh, amazing. 
What kind of things do you come up on with running this place? It really varies because some of our young people are in hospital, mm -hmm. which means they're quite unwell often. And other young people who come here, although they might have had a hosp hospital admission, it might not have been for one or two years. So they're kind of leading these really fulfilling lives and kind of at work and at school. The people that are admitted for mental health issues, is it because of skunk? Mm -hmm. When you talk to young people, nine times out of ten, it's skunk that they've been smoking. You know, and for some young people, you know, having a spliff or whatever is nothing and it's fine and they can function and, you know, that's cool. But for a lot of the young people we work with, when you're smoking really strong skunk and there's kind of all these additional life stresses which you have as a young person growing up, it can have a really, really detrimental impact on a young person's mental health, which could lead them, you know, to having a hospital admission for a few weeks or mm -hmm. it could be a year plus. Looking around here, this is like, it's like a music college, you know mm. what I mean? It's very well put together. So when you're talking about um, music and how quickly it can have an effect on a young person, the yeah. best example I can really give you is, for example, hearing voices. A lot of our young people hear voices. Um, and a lot of the time, music is a distraction. So they might be talking to themselves um, and you might be able to see that the voices might be becoming a bit more distressing. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can really kind of intervene get them engaged in kind of making music, writing lyrics, getting in the booth, and there's a focus there, which means the voices tend to d diminish. Is there any kids around there that I'll mm. be able to meet? And... Yeah, sure, Dee's downstairs, he's come, he'd love to meet ya. Hello, Hello. Man. You right? Hey, man. Yep. Yeah. Yo, brother. Good to meet. It's like thinking about life, got me thinking about death. Thinking about death, got me thinking about stress. Thinking about stress got me thinking by I and thinking by I got me thinking why. why yeah, man, that was cold. Would you enjoy mm. that? Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, could you explain to them a little bit more about like what you've you've kind of been through in your journey and like what what this place has done to kind of help that? Before I was on the road and everything like that, doing obviously stupidness. And my mum passed away, my cousin passed away in the same week, and friend passed away in the same week as well. So having all that mental strain on my mind, it was hard for me to be able to function. Was you smoking weed at the time? Yeah, it was. It was skunk. Yeah, yeah. It would calm me down, but at the same time, it would wind me up as well. I smoked because obviously the stress in my life, one, two things that must have went wrong and everything like that, got arrested. And then they said that I had to go to the, like, a mental home. However it felt to me, about seven months, but what they told me was, that, like, say, about four. When I first went in there, I was always angry and everything like that, Would, wouldn't talk to people. And, like, after a while, coming here, Obviously, being in the studio and everything calm me right down. It relaxes me. Like, I feel like I can sometimes get in my own zone and, you know, like, release whatever stress. The smoke is sometimes, initially in the beginning, it feels like it's taking away the pressure. Yeah. But then in the long term, it's like it's always coming back. You know, everybody loves to say, like, weed is cool, it's, 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 it's not harmful, it's just weed, it's a plant. Not things that have been added and not, chemicalized. Not, yeah, not chemicalized, laboratory, skunk is a killer. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite here. I'm not anti-weed and I still smoke. I still think it's possible to have a positive relationship with weed like my parents have and friends. However, skunk in particular is clearly causing a problem for young people's brains who are not fully formed yet. It really worries me that teenagers start smoking skunk without understanding what it does to them. Skunk isn't for everybody and it affects people differently. As an artist, it saddens me to see people's careers stalling because of a problem they don't know exists. What can we do? We should educate ourselves. Not all weed is the same, and not all weed is for everyone. Most importantly, we need to support each other when things get out of control. Then we all win. Like my grandma said, tell the truth, shame the devil. Yeah.